Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Sorry to wake you all up. Um, so my name's Adam Cowley. Um, I'm a full-stack web developer and a founder of Commit, who are a multi-discipline development house. Um, I've been using Neo4j for around about three years now. Um, and what I'm going to do today is um, jump in at the deep end, um, get started with some real um, um, modeling, um, some, some modeling decisions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through how on the back of Lash's Graph Connect, um, I built a, a journey planner using the Air4J. I'm going to walk through a few of the modeling decisions that I've made, um, and also some of the snippets of Cypher that, uh, that helped me along the way. Um, so I don't know if anyone here would, would recognize this. Um, so this is um, the roundabout in my hometown called the Magic Roundabout. Um, and this is something that on the surface um, can, may, may confuse a lot of people. Um, but if you think of this as something that can be solved by a graph, um, then it actually becomes really easy. Um, so by representing the uh, junctions uh, in the roads with the nodes and then connecting them together with um, relationships and then creating uh, properties against those relationships, uh, we can decide what the, the best way to, um, to navigate um, across. So we could either use the, the shortest path in terms of number of traversals or we can use the weight and set against the relationships to, to find the shortest path. Uh, the approach I took to journey planning is similar. Uh, it's basically connecting the dots between the origin and destination. Um, so in researching uh, the potential data sources, I found that a, a wide range of information was available on the internet, uh, whether that be in REST, SOAP, or in stream and APIs. Uh, my starting point was to um, work with train journeys. Um, so for that, I would need two key pieces of information. Um, those were stations and schedules. Uh, so the government's nap time data set uh, provides location data for, for all of the transport hubs in the UK uh, in CSV format. So this can easily be loaded into the, the database used in load CSV uh, in Cypher. Uh, and for scheduling information, um, Network Rail provides a schedule API which provides um, information of all of the, uh, the train operators across the country. Uh, Network Rail also offer the, um, the train movements API which is a real-time stream of um, train movements and these are both in, in JSON format. Um, so my starting point was to uh, create a, a model with train services uh, connected to stations with a uh, cause-out relationship. Um, so in each of these having a... Um, oops, sorry. Uh, so each of these having an order. Um, so I found this model was too reliant on ordering the relationships um, and, and wasn't really flexible enough to, to provide the results um, for a single query if the journey required more than one stop or more than one change. Um, so uh, to combat this uh, reliance on collections, what I did is added a, a set of leg nodes to the graph. Um, and each service would have one or more legs that would call at a station. Um, adding a next leg relationship um, to create a, a linked list of, uh, of legs uh, meant that I could take advantage of index-free adjacency um, and cut down on the, the amount of indexes I was comparing. Um, and adding in relationships to uh, the day and the operator as well uh, managed to, um, or allowed me to reduce the number of node scans um, for the query and also the index comparisons on those nodes once they were um, pulled out of the database. Uh, still, I found this model wasn't really um, accurate enough when I was considering changing between services. So to accurately do this, I'd have to add platform data to the model. Uh, so a leg would uh, start and stop um, at platform. Uh, and where a traveler would need to, to transfer between two platforms, uh, there was a can transfer to relationship placed between them uh, with properties for the, uh, the distance and the amount of time it would take them. Uh, and this would ensure that the user could actually can, uh, catch the train. Uh, so this, this is really easy in Cypher. Um, so um, all I needed to do was, was create a variable length path. Um, and Neo4j just allows you to traverse these uh, different relationship types um, in, in, in from the, um, the start point to the end point. Um, and luckily enough, the Cypher engine does this all for you out of the box. You, know, you don't have to, to know any, any um, computer science or anything like that. I dread to think how complex this would be in a relational database. Um, however, uh, I found that still at this point the query times were still quite large, it was still taking around about 30 seconds to, um, to get result, which wasn't performant enough. 
Um, so I needed to make the, um, the model a little bit more efficient. Um, so as we turn to the whiteboard, I had a bit of an epiphany. So by um, directing the relationships all in a single direction, um, it would make the, the queries a lot more efficient. So by swapping out the start, sat, and end set relationships with new CAN board and CAN alike uh, relationships meant I could traverse in a single direction and ignore a whole subset of queries, that, uh, sorry, subset of relationships um, inside the queries. Uh, this model also sent itself, uh, lent itself to bus services. Uh, so the only difference being that there's no real um, overarching group for, for most of the um, bus stops. Um, so um, instead of having um, an overarching group, these bus stops would have um, uh, standalone properties um, with latitude and longitude labeled uh, properties stored against them. Um, and from here on, the, the model, is, model is identical with relationships for CAN board and CAN light between the legs and the stops. Uh, this led to a decision to add point labels to all of the stations and all of the bus stops anywhere where the, the, um, the traverse would start. Um, so each point in the uh, uh, so each point node would contain latitude and longitude properties, uh, which could be, could be used to calculate the distance from the, the current user um, using Neo4j's built-in spatial functions. And this would provide a logical start, uh, an endpoint for, uh, for the traversal. So here what I'm doing is I'm using parameters to create a, a point uh, to represent the user's starting position, then finding all points in the database that have a latitude and longitude uh, property set against them. Uh, and then taking the uh, closest stop to them to um, start the traversal. Uh, whereas considering switching between one or more service types, so between a bus service and a train service, uh, there was a can travel onwards to relationship um, which was created between stops and stations. Now this was created using Cypher, um, simply by finding all of the stops that were within, within a, a reasonable distance of each other and then creating a relationship between them with a distance and the time to transfer between the two. Um, so in terms of the updated cipher, um, basically all I had to do then was add in the extra relationship types. And then as you can see, um, I added the single um, direction um, relationship, uh, single direction to the path. Um, but I, again, at this point, um, we're still having issues. Um, I was finding that even though this was a, a simple query to write, the results weren't great that were coming back. Um, there were lots of um, results and, and multiple results that were coming back to represent the same routes. Uh, so I had to dig down uh, into the results set and start to exclude anti-patterns um, in the results set. Uh, for example, because I defined those, um, this a long string of relationships, um, I was getting patterns like this where uh, a, a result would have a um, a leg which goes through a next leg, then alights to a stop, boards back onto the same leg and carries on. So I needed to find a way to disallow these patterns. Um, and it was at this point um, that I turned to the Slack channel for help. So these next two slides um, are dedicated to Michael Hunger and the, and the DevRel team. Um, and if you haven't already done so, head onto the Slack. It's, it's a great resource if you're ever, ever stuck and in trouble. Um, so here I'm taking three adjacent nodes in a path. Um, with, with a pattern of leg, stop, and leg, uh, where the, and then finding all the ones where there's a next leg relationship between them, and then using the, uh, the none predicate to filter all these out of the result set. Uh, again, slightly longer one. So here I'm looking for a platform, um, sorry, a, a platform transfer, which includes a leg, a platform, platform transfer, platform, and then to a leg, and then comparing the, the arrival time plus the time it takes to transfer in minutes. Um, with the departure time to make sure that not only the, the user could actually catch the, the, the second leg, um, but also that they weren't waiting at a platform for more than 30 minutes. Um, this, uh, you know, 4J made this all you know, very easy, but there were a few issues I came across the way. Um, the, the main issue that I, I came across when I was building this um, was when I started to implement real-time data. Um, so as I had streams of data coming in real time um, into a Node.js application, which needed to be in the database in near real time, um, I couldn't really batch this into transactions or to, to combine these together. Um, so this led to quite a few um, errors um, and, and deadlock errors when writing to the database. Um, so I 
found the easiest way to, to get around these um, transient errors, which is to simply try again. I think in most cases, um, the information will persist into the database after a maximum of two to three tries. Um, so in terms of results, um, thanks to, to Neo4j and thanks to Cypher, this complex problem was solved with a single query uh, with around 200 lines. Um, and on a sample data set of 50,000 nodes and 75,000 relationships, the queries were taken between two and five seconds. And here's an example um, result, which is taking me from my home um, to, or, or on a bus service, then to the bus station, transferring to a train station where I then subsequently get on two train services and then arrive in another station. So in order to put this in production, as much as I hate to admit this, I'm not a Java developer, um, I would need to utilize Java's traversal API. Uh, so instead of first finding all the paths and then writing Cypher to filter these out, uh, what the traversal API would allow me to do would be to uh, uh, get sort of um, stop the traversal mid-flow if the, the, the patterns and if the path didn't match the, the requirements um, that I had. Um, so like I said, unfortunately I'm not a, a Java developer, but if there's anyone out there who'd like to give this a go, I'd um, like to team up with this, and I'm happy to uh, um, happy to have a conversation. Um, so that's journey plan in a nutshell. Um, if anyone's got any questions, I'm going to be around. I'm at Adam Cowley on Twitter or Adam Cowley on the Slack channel. So that's it. Thank you. Why? Um, <laughs> oh, so, so my committee is a, a business that I started up. I'm not going to go into a pitch about my business. Uh, the, the reason that I, I built this was um, last year for uh, Graph Connect, the, the night before they had a Graph Hack, um, and what they were, uh, the, it was all built around, um, all the, 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 the theme of it was um, transport. So there's all these different data sets. Um, so I started hacking around on the night, and then I thought, actually, this is quite a nice use case. I'll, I'll carry on with this. Um, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll see what I can do with it and, and maybe turn it into uh, something that I can sell. Um, unfortunately, the, the big train companies haven't taken it up yet, but <laughs> you never know. You never know. Um, it so right, right now, it, it finds all paths, and then it's a case of, of filtering them down. Um, so there, there's no shortest path algorithm there or anything like that at the moment. Um, but it's it absolutely it's something that you could do, or maybe using uh, like a pathfinder, or you know, uh, the um, using the weighting um, and machine learning to actually get the right result. Cool. Anybody else? Any other questions? Yeah, so, so um, it, it was using the, the built-in spatial that came with um, Neo 4J uh, 3.1. Um, so instead of using the, the standalone spatial plugin, um, I was basically using point and distance functions that, that were just inside Cypher out of the box um, to, to compare the, uh, the distances. Yeah, yes, yeah, so it's really quick, yeah. So there's, there's two approaches. You can either do it with, with writing queries and you can have a query that could either, um, you know, maybe you could write an application in your business logic, um, injecting, um, you know, requirements, um, you know, um, different filters that you needed. Um, but in terms of, of the actual Java API itself, this is something that's built in. Um, so you, you would build the traversal as, a, as Java classes um, and then it would then run those traversals um, on the database rather than writing a query. So I think it's and or either or um, sort of approach. Cool. No problem. Thanks everyone.